What if he is Hitler? What if he's literally Hitler and tries to kill us? I see good things about Hitler also. I like Hitler. Now I'm a Nazi, Ari Emanuel. Kanye West could be said to be the man that had everything. Money, fame, love. Okay, maybe not love. But you see, Kanye may have just set the record speed run for the fastest self-destruction of a celebrity career yet. And that's saying something when you consider the absolutely delicious just desserts of the Amber Heard or Bill Cosby's Fall from Grace. Let's talk about it. Kanye West has just announced that he is a Nazi who loves Hitler and has now been permanently suspended from Twitter for the second time. I don't know about you, but I did not see that coming. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Before we get into Kanye's final solution, let's take a step back and figure out how in the hell we got here. So for those of you living under a rock, Kanye West is one of the most famous musicians alive, quickly rising to fame in the early 2000s, sculpting a generation with his music. All of West's first six solo studio albums were included in the Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums of All Time. His song Heartless was amongst the top 10 best-selling singles worldwide in 2009. Stronger is one of the most downloaded songs of all time on iTunes, and Gold Digger was the ninth biggest Hot 100 song in the 2000s. But that was the old Kanye, before he dove headfirst into the shallow end of an anti-Semitic swimming pool. Unfortunately, recent events have muddied his legacy, ruined his reputation, and made one of his most popular songs age particularly poorly. And it all started, or at least publicly seemed to start, after a messy divorce with ex-wife Kim Kardashian in March of this year. And since then, Kanye has been ordered to pay $200,000 a month in child support. She take my money. Now, I'm not saying she's a gold digger, but she does have him on the hook for 18 years. Funny thing is, after the consequences of his own actions, Kim's net worth is now much larger than Kanye's at $1.8 billion dollars. For those of you unaware of the unfathomable difference between a couple hundred thousand dollars and a billion dollars, that's like me sending my ex dirty underwear for child support. She doesn't fucking need it. But it's not just Gold Digger. Another one of Kanye's songs was to age worse than month old goat milk on a hot summer day. And that is Black Skinhead. I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. But Kim and Kanye's divorce was only the tip of the iceberg when it came to Kanye's mental instability. You see, he'd been struggling with bipolar disorder for much of his life, officially getting diagnosed in 2016, finally getting put on medication that'll curb his manic episodes. Although feeling creatively suppressed and a desire to connect with his late mother during his 2020 album Donda, he officially stopped taking his medication. However, much like the passengers on the Titanic, no one really cares how deep the iceberg goes. All they know is that the ship is sinking. So while mental illness is never something I'm gonna joke or make light of, you better believe I will judge the fuck out of someone who refuses to acknowledge or even improve the factors that are contributing to their dangerous behaviors. For instance, one of the earliest signs of Kanye's manic episodes was that time he took that mic from Taylor Swift at the 2009 VMAs. Yo Taylor, I, I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. Remember how simple life was back then when that was the big news of the year and not like, you know, constant political corruption or break of World War III? I mean, how rude of Taylor Swift for stealing that award from that up and coming new girl. What's her name? Beyonce. Is what I imagine the louder voice in Kanye's head was saying while it drowned out that small voice that probably sounded a bit like this. Like, no, God! No, God, please, no! Or how about that time in 2020 when Kanye announced he was running for president? Seems logical, since political presence has really been the highlight of his career thus far. Oh wait, no it wasn't. His only political policy that he's mentioned at that point was that slavery is a choice. And who could forget, just earlier this year we had the hilarious altercations between Kanye and comedian slash male escort Pete Davidson. It's hard enough knowing that your ex moved on faster than you after a breakup, but of all people that she moved on to was Pete Big Dick Davidson. That had to have sent Kanye well over the edge. Yo, it's Skeet. Can you please take a second and calm down? It's 8 a.m. and I don't gotta be like this. Kim is literally the best mother I've ever met. What she does for those kids is amazing and you are so fucking lucky that she's your kid's mom. I've decided I'm not gonna let you treat us this way anymore and I'm done being quiet. Grow the fuck up. Kanye retorts with, you're using profanity. Where are you right now? Pete responds, in bed with your wife. <laughs> Oh my god. Kanye really got shafted by these texts. I mean, Pete was just horsing around a little too much, okay? Kanye did not deserve to get dicked around that hard by Pete Davidson. 
not unlike every other woman in Hollywood. Pete even got Kanye's kids' names tattooed on him. How rude. <laughs> Actually, that's pretty fucked up. I don't know what he was thinking with that one. However, his latest manic episodes may have pushed the boundaries a smidge too far past wildly offensive and deplorable possibly related to his business contracts, or even possibly related to his divorce with Kim. Or maybe it's his burning animosity for Pete Davidson and thus all Jewish people, which doesn't make sense because Pete's not even Jewish. But Kanye decided to take the fast pass at Disneyland on the cancel coaster with this tweet he crafted. I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. Okay. Well, pardon me, I'm no geologist, but I believe it's DEFCON, not DEFCON. Also, DEFCON 3 isn't even the bad one. It's like, middle of the road. It's not the most serious of issues, but it's also like, eh, we'll get to it later. It's literally just in the middle. It's kind of like when you have three-day-old Taco Bell. You know, at some point, you're going to be launching some Diablo-fueled nuclear warheads. But when it is, your guess is as good as any. Kanye continues in his tweet. The funny thing is, I can't actually be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew. What? You know, I don't know how some people would take this if we flipped it and we had some Jewish people saying that they're black and then followed up with some pretty obviously racist shit. It's like the hamster that is spinning the wheel of Kanye's last two remaining brain cells must be named Simone Biles because the level of mental gymnastics that he has to do to convince himself that black and Jewish are synonyms is frankly worth a gold medal. It's probably the only time I've heard someone one up that old, I'm not racist, I have a black friend thing. Uh, I can't be homophobic, my hamster's gay. I can't be anti-Semitic, my mom's cousin's Jewish. I can't be misogynistic, I love titties. Honestly, it's kind of hilarious if you ignore the ramifications that this is probably the biggest setback that Jewish people have had in about, give or take 80 years. So let's not kid ourselves. What happened next should be a shock to no one. And by no one, I mean Kanye. This was very much a shock to Kanye. The thing about it, me and Adidas, is like, I could literally say anti-Semitic shit and they can't drop me. I could say anti-Semitic things and Adidas can't drop me. Now what? Now what? Literally hours later, Adidas did in fact drop Kanye. Adidas admitted that they would rather take a $250 million loss than stick with Kanye on their contract. Can you imagine how bad you must look to a company for them to prefer to not make money? Capitalism has gotten to the point where not making money is almost as bad as a swift diagnosis of stage four ass cancer for some execs. These greedy fucks love money. And you know, they're willing to turn a blind eye to make more money. That's just what they do. So being able to willingly make them take a Justin Bieber sized dump on their profits just to get you away from them. I'm not even mad. I'm impressed. So soon after, Kanye was dropped from a lot of other partnerships, including Balenciaga, Vogue, and Gap. And this is about the time when Kanye was banned from Twitter for the first time. Trying to put the shoe on the other foot after losing the Adidas deal, Kanye then headed off to Skechers to try and make a replacement shoe deal, who then promptly escorted him off the premises. Skechers, living up to their name, were indeed sketched out by Kanye and did not want to touch him with a 10 foot pole. This is about the time that things went from DEFCON 3 to DEFCON 2. Kanye decided to go on a media tour just to walk out on any podcast that would have him. Why bro, would any of hey, that? bro, hey, hey, bro, I ain't finished. I ain't finished my sentence. Nothing you're, nothing my you're saying has idea. anything to do hey, boy, with hey, regret. Hey, hey, boy, don't call hey, me boy, boy, don't finish, I told you. Oh, don't treat me like a boy then. Okay, if that's your position. Inter That's clear. Interview, interview adjourned. Love you. <laughs> I think they've been extremely unfair to you. I who think. is they though? We can't say who they is, can we? Team. What do you mean it's not? It what, what do I mean like, uh, uh, okay, so how about, are you leaving? Are you afraid of the press? I'm trying to call you out on your bullshit because I hope I'm somebody you can trust. That's I don't it. fucking trust you. Well, you should find people in your life you can trust. Don't tell me what I should do. I'm not one of your BLM marchers. I mean, what kind of person goes on multiple podcasts just to walk off mid-interview? It's like going out to dinner with your friends just to ditch them with the bill. That's like going to a job interview and then actually telling them that you do not have five years experience for this entry-level job. That's like asking that special someone if they want to come back to your place just so you can cream your shorts mid-Uber ride and then through tears dripping on your phone, try to reroute the trip back to the bar so you can drop them off and then pretend like tonight never even happened. 
Anyways, flash forward to just this last week. Elon buys Twitter, he reinstates Kanye along with Trump, Andrew Tate, a bunch of others. And to show the world that Hanukkah miracles really can happen, Kanye's first tweet back was this. Shalom. Kanye gets banned from Twitter for anti-Semitism, and his first tweet back is Shalom. The balls on this man. The chutzpah on this meshugana, as they say in Jewish people tongue. Again, I'm not even mad. I'm impressed. It's as if Kanye learned from every YouTuber apology video that the best move is just to skip past the apology phase and get right back into it. And it's honestly hard to argue with that logic because it kind of worked for a few hours before he inevitably fucked it up again. But I respect the attempt. So, you're Kanye. You just got a new lease on life, unbanned from Twitter, ready to take on the world by storm. What do you do next? If you told me the answer would be running for president in 2024, I would have thrown you into a well. I would have tried you as a witch and burned you at the stake. Legitimately, you'd probably have better luck winning the lottery than guessing this man's next move. It's like the Batman trying to catch the Joker, but instead of terrorizing Gotham, he just has a hate boner for Jewish people. Though he's still somehow claiming that that boner is filled to the brim with God's will and love for all people. Maybe he's more like Two-Face than the Joker. He then had enough chutzpah left to go to Mar-a-Lago and ask Trump to be his running mate. Even asking Trump to rescind his own candidacy for president. Just just so he could be Kanye's VP. You can imagine how well Trump took that. Fake. Fake. Apparently Trump screamed at him to get the fuck out of his house, amongst other words. I'll say this, Trump is a lot of things, but playing second fiddle is not one of them. I think the thing that Trump was most perturbed about, me asking him to be my vice president, that caught him off guard. Nah. Really? After Trump kicked him out, for a few precious minutes, it seemed like Kanye had narrowly avoided a near rock bottom situation. But he managed to push through his limits. He went ultra instinct, dodging any attempt to be a decent human being. And finally, Kanye hit whatever the opposite of enlightenment is by becoming fully transparent. He was no longer bound by the earthly tethers of shame or decency. He decided to go on the Alex Jones podcast, Infowars, with Nick Fuentes. This would be the moment that I think we can define as the end of Kanye West. For context, let's break down just who else was on this podcast. This is Alex Jones, host of Infowars, and one of the most controversial people on the internet, legitimately owing $1 billion in damages for making up shit about the Sandy Hook shooting, which if you could believe made him file for bankruptcy. Shocking. Alex Jones is also the same person who said that water is turning frogs gay, so let that be the threshold for how crazy Kanye is in comparison. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the freaking frogs gay. Do you understand that? Turn, turn the, the freaking frogs, frogs gay. Serious crap. In fact, Alex Jones is so insane that of all the people that Elon just reinstated on Twitter, he was specifically mentioned to not be one of them. That says a lot. And just because comedy comes in threes, the other person on this podcast was Nick Fuentes, a white supremacist who is an anti-Semitic, Putin supporter, Holocaust denier, and a member of the incel movement. Essentially, this man is what basic white moms tell their daughters the boogeyman looks like. The, the Starbucks antichrist, if you will. So let's get onto it. The peace day resistance. We're gonna unclog that shitty toilet bowl of opinions that Kanye has just mouth diarrhea out onto the Alex Jones podcast. That's right, you're not Hitler, you're not a Nazi, you don't deserve to be called that and demonized. I see, I, I see good things about Hitler also. The Jew, I love everyone. And you can love what we're, you know, what we're pushing with the pornography. But this guy, I'm done with the classifications. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table especially Hitler. And there it is. Okay, so Kanye starts off strong. He starts talking about how he sees good things in Hitler. I'll admit, he lost me a little bit with the pornography thing, but he managed to stick the landing and bring it all the way back to how Hitler is a swell guy. What is mind boggling to me is why this needs to be said at all. Obviously people aren't all good or all bad, but this guy is as close as we have to the latter. He literally united the world in order to defeat him like a shitty Thanos with a goofy mustache. And dissecting his morality as if he's a, a fictional character with a complicated and captivating character development arc is not the insightful, enlightened take that you think it is. It only brings up a very serious question of why are you trying to alter the public perception of someone who everyone universally understands is literally a Nazi. I, I'm just saying, I don't like Nazis and I don't like what some of the mafias are doing either. I like Hitler. 
He just sneaks it in at the end there. You know, this story goes beyond any reasonable comprehension when no one is even mentioning that he is decked out in a gimp suit. He literally is dressed in the way that congressmen dresses when they order a high-end dominatrix right before getting their balls paddled. And no one is talking about it. We're all too fixated on the soothing sounds of Nazi ASMR to notice the guy who looks like he's about to go on a panty raid at the college dorms. It's truly unbelievable. I love Jewish people, but I also love Nazis. <laughs> oh man, well, I have to disagree with that. Imagine how crazy you have to be to make Alex Jones look like the normal one. Again, the man who literally filed for bankruptcy after being $1 billion in debt for being a liar. And then there's this weird segment of, of Kanye making a joke about Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu through a talking puppet of a made out of a net and a bottle of Yoohoo. What the fuck is going on? They are gonna have to listen up. What we did is we brought Netanyahu with us. Ah. <laughs> I mean, this is, I'm in the twilight zone right now. Netanyahu. I agree. What do you have to say to Alex Jones right now, Nick Fuentes and Ye? It was bad. It was bad for Trump to meet with Nick and Ye. Okay. <laughs> I, I gotta be honest, this is kind of just sad at this point. So what ended up happening after this was essentially a, the Twitter equivalent of a high-speed car chase with Kanye just furiously tweeting more and more tweets, with each one being more nonsensical than the last. His greatest hits being a reveal that Kim and NBA star Chris Paul were apparently having an affair while they were still together. Kanye also tweeted, a Jewish star of David with a swastika inside of it, allegedly a sign of freedom and love. However, it's actually the symbol of a religious cult named realism that believes that aliens will come back to earth and reproduce with humans so i don't even know what to make of that and finally kanye's tweet storm came to an end with a, a pretty hilarious picture of elon musk getting hosed down and as you're probably aware this was the final straw for elon musk not the picture of him getting hosed down that that was funny it was the obvious picture of a swastika cosplaying as a jewish star this final act leading elon to officially ban kanye from twitter for the second time. So in closing, there's probably a lot more to this epilogue, but to be honest, the moral of the story here is just that this is probably the end of Kanye West. If you loved his music, just remember it for the, the art that it was and not for the person that he is. Kanye, we hope you get help, but more importantly, please stay off the internet. Also, because the internet doesn't forget, they left you one last fuck you. Kanye's Reddit page has now become a Taylor Swift fan page. So I guess there's always a happy ending.